Hi everyone and welcome to this week's episode of Relationship Talks. I am your host Laurie Brooke and together we will get to take a look at what goes on behind closed doors. Today is a really special episode. Today we are going to do the best bits from the first 10 episodes. We are now 11 episodes into Relationship Talks and I thought it was a great time to kind of wrap up what we have learned over the first 10 episodes. Hi everyone and welcome to this week's episode which is a wrap up episode of our first 10 uh, shows for Relationship Talks. I'm really excited to have you here. As I was planning out how Relationship Talks would I suppose really run its course as a show and get a really let us learn from other people and their relationships. I thought it would be a great thing that every 10 episodes, we kind of do a bit of a wrap up and do the best bits from those first, uh, from those 10 previous episodes. So for our first wrap up show, I want to take you back to episode one, where we look, talk to Jerry and Amanda on their friendship. I would describe a relationship as our friendship is fun. It's really honest. Um, we've got lots in common and we're just like, there's lots of support. We're just there for each other, which is awesome. So um, yeah, that's it in the summary. Would you add anything to that, Jerry? No, I think you're pretty spot on there, but because I love talking, I'll think what I what else I can add. Uh... <laughs> well, that... ah, and I've sort of forgotten the question, so I'm going to pass it over to Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I was going to say probably like what's interesting about Jerry and I is that we're also each other's clients. So we've got this like interesting relationship yeah. where like really good friends and we're each other's clients. So I feel like we always give each other like feedback as well. Like, you know, um, so I think that's, yeah, that really helps. So, you know, so she, as my client, she tells me, you know, like what is being, what is going really well and what, you know, maybe we can, I could enhance or make better, or this is a good idea and vis-a-vis. Yeah. So we're kind of like each other's um, business ear, like, you know, and we're actually like living and breathing it. Yeah. It's really good. And we're, yeah. Um, we've got a really good exchange and it works really well yeah so and I do like as well like with Amanda saying that uh, there isn't the fear of um, sharing something with Amanda or Amanda sharing something with me that might hurt our feelings like we always really this is through construction to make both of us better like this is to really enhance each other Um, it's not really a friendship that I feel Amanda that's a competition um, you know I went to boarding school and all girls boarding school and yeah there was competition with other women or other girls and that sort of thing but I've never felt like that with Amanda um, and I think some female friendships can be based on that but mm. it's always been very supportive of each other like we're in each other's corner cheering each other on so when you're sort of talking about disagreements arguments it's like mm, that doesn't really happen because we address, we talk about it, and we're actually coming from a place of love for each other and cheering each other on. Like, I want the best for Amanda, and I feel that from Amanda as well. So, give me one word to describe your friendship. Oh, well, what came to me just then was abundant. Oh my yeah. gosh, I had the same word. Get out. No! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And that's why we're friends. Yes, that's right. Oh, that's so funny. Oh, my gosh. That wasn't even planned. No, that's so cool. And then after Jerry and Amanda, we had the pleasure of meeting Erin and Jim Schneider, and we got to talk to them about their marriage. So Mm -hmm. how would you describe your relationship now? I think I describe it as a relationship built on mutual respect um, and the desire for both of us to grow together and also as individuals. So um, a lot of support, a lot of love, a lot of patience. Yes. Um, But really we do, we we want each other to be the best versions of each other. Yeah. I think that's, you know, right on. We both have our own kind of pursuits that we encourage each other to, to, to go after. And it's cool being, you know, I really appreciate being in the kind of relationship that has that sort of encouragement to be ourselves, but also we put a lot of work into, you know, making sure that our own directions are going in the same way. And, you know, we, you know, kind of both 
have similar interests, but also our own. And it's kind of a nice balance of those things. Yeah. yeah. And so Aaron and Jim, you've both been married now for 13 years. You've got two children. You've got a nine-year-old daughter and a six-year-old son. Yep. That's right. How do you think your relationship has changed since you become parents? Oh, I think... I mean, we've done a lot of growth <laughs> in the 13 years. Yes, a we have. A lot of growth. Um, I think we're much more secure with who we are as individuals, mm-hmm. um, which I think allows us to be much more secure in our relationship. Um, you know, we've we've gone over a lot of hurdles together, um, a lot of difficult times in our life. And I think those can definitely break apart into um, couples, but I think for us, it's made us stronger because we really have decided to come together and work on this as a team. Kind of following on what she says, like, I, I, I do feel like ever since the beginning, even like, you know, it wasn't all, you know, like we had our honeymoon stage, of course, but it's also, you know, we, we certainly, both of us are trying to find ourselves at the same time as, you know, coming together in a relationship and we had, you know, struggles as everyone does. But I feel like what, really you know I remember it really sinking in for me at an early time where it was just like the first time I felt like I was in a relationship where it wasn't like every time there was a disagreement or we run into a problem like oh man maybe that's going to be it it really was this commitment to kind of see things through those that you know we both know that even when we had you know rough patches that we're going to find a way through it together and you know like she says be stronger on the other side I sincerely believe that's been the case so can we drill down on that a little bit more in terms of when you have had uh, disagreements or fights or conflict of any type, how have you dealt with that as a couple? I think, you know, for me, when, after we have a disagreement, I need some space to just recenter myself, get over whatever it is that I was, you know, upset about in the first place. But then we always come back together and reconnect and repair. And I think that's really been a huge thing that we've brought into our relationship that we both kind of had to to learn, Mm -hmm. honestly. Um, And then that we passed on to our children. And that's something that's really important to us is that repair aspect. And, and then also at the same time, allowing that, it's like, okay, once we repaired, we reconnected, then we don't bring that up over and over again, as you know, to punish each other. So that's kind of it. You know, it's just like, all right, sorry for what, what happened now let's move on. And how can we, if we need to improve, if we need to make changes, we discuss that and work together in order to, to make sure that that only gets better going forward. And I think also recognizing, I mean, one thing I think we've really improved on both of us and also something we try to pass on to our kids is that it's okay to, to sit in difficult feelings sometimes which that was something that was a huge struggle for me because I would just be like, oh, I want everything to be better right now. And sometimes it just, it isn't. Sometimes it takes a little time. Yeah. And just kind of coming to that place of, you know, as Aaron said, like sometimes she needs that space. And at first that was like, oh, shoot, you know, what I must have, I must really be off base here. But now it's just like, yeah, that's just what she needs. And she needs to feel her her way. I need to feel things my way. And we try to encourage the kids also to, you know, recognize when they're having feelings and, you know, work through them in a hopefully healthy way, but realizing that, you know, just pretending that you're not feeling a certain way isn't helpful to anything. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I honestly, (laughs) I, I couldn't do this without him. I mean, I really couldn't. Um, and that goes for everything, um, parenting, yeah, me too. (laughs) relationships with family, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's honestly kind of my rock, um, And because I think we had such a strong foundation before we had kids, we were able to then kind of roll into parenting and to parenthood with a very strong foundation and, um, and able to really, you know, work off of each other and, um, and thrive off of that relationship. Yeah. I mean, I agree. It's like, there's nothing that we don't talk about. And that's the thing, like, I couldn't even imagine. It's like, yeah, of course there are times where we both have to, you know, work on the fly or make decisions or do things, but it's like, it's, I think part of the fact that we, we dialogue about so many things and touch base, it's like, it's always like, we always have a good sense of where things are, like what our direction is, where it comes to parenting. Sorry, I got something. 
um uh parenting and and you know just general life stuff like usually uh we're walking in the same path together yeah i would agree with that I really think it's, uh, you know, actually going right back to the top, it's one of the things Aaron talked about. It's the it's the mutual respect, I think. It's, you know, because that sort of from that comes the communication, comes the openness, because there's this, you know, love and respect for each other, understanding, you know, where each other's coming from and taking the time to understand where the other person's coming from. And also, you know, having the respect to allow each other to do the things we do, but also having the respect for our relationship and realizing it's the foundation of, you know, what we are, what our family is and how important it is to, you know, work on. And I feel like, you know, sometimes what can happen, especially for parents or any kind of relationship, really, you get caught up in life, which is very easy to do. Uh, and you sort of forget to do the, the, the regular maintenance, you know, um, I work in the construction industry and I can tell you that's something when, uh, you know, you look at buildings, it's like, uh, yeah, if, you, if you, you put off the regular maintenance, you might save a few dollars this year, but later on, you're going to have some real problems. And and I honestly think that doing that regular maintenance over time and paying attention to the connection that we have and working on it makes a big difference. Yeah, I think, you know, the fact that we're both willing to put the work in and, you know, we we have, we've, we've turned to therapists mm -hmm. to guide yep. us through some hard times. Um, you know, we see therapists now just on a regular basis to kind of keep that, mm -hmm. make sure that we're kind of on the same page and we don't, I, I, I think a lot, what I see too often in families and parents is they tend to all of a sudden separate, you know, they not necessarily on purpose, but it just kind of naturally mm -hmm. happens. And so I think for us having that therapist there to kind of just ensure that we're, we're staying together and working on the same things is really beneficial. So it's great having a partner who's willing to put the work in. It's, um, that's really special. Yeah. I'm highly appreciative of that too. So, <laughs> yeah. Now for the first solo episode, I pose the question to you, what is important in your relationship? What can be misunderstood is the value in these, I suppose these little actions and, it doesn't have to be um, overt. It doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be extravagant. But these little actions help build up what I liken to our relationship bank account. It's those actions that, you know, when they're done and they make the other person feel really good, that it just creates this positive environment. So that when something does go wrong, you've got something to dip into and go, oh, you know what? They didn't really mean that. And you can give the other person the benefit of the doubt. It's a really great way to be able to, I suppose, go through life's ups and downs with each other. Keeping your relationship in a focus I suppose another way to look at it is it is very much a give and take relationship, right? It's there's going to be times when we need to give more and there'll be times when we take more. And then after that, for episode four, we got to speak to a gentleman by the name of Soslin Temison, and he talked to us about the mistakes that he learned from his past relationships. And I want to give a big hats off to Soslin because it takes a lot of courage, I think, to come out in public and go, you know what, I made mistakes and these are the mistakes I learned and I'm going to share them in case so that if anyone else can learn from them, please do, please don't make the same mistakes that I made. So one of the biggest things that got me is that knowing that I think I uh, the biggest struggle that I've had is the insecurity of myself. You know, one thing I've, I have learned is really not, um, it's being happy with who you are. If you had to give one key takeaway in everything that you've been through with relationships, what is it that you're going to do differently next time? Wow. So one thing I'm going to do differently is one <clears throat> is when I first introduced myself, it's just be happy with who I am. You know, it's just being happy with who you are and just being happy of thinking, okay, you know what? If, you know, not putting a facade, not embellishing, not just being like that, but like 
hey, you know what? I have soft soul and demons. And, and you know what? And here's what, you know, here's what I have to uh, not offer, but here's what I've been through, some of the circles I've been through. So it's kind of like you take, you give what you say, like you like give like some of the things. And then it's kind of like you say, okay, you're going to take it or leave it. It's, and it's kind of a bad way of thinking it, but it's kind of like that metaphorically, you know, here's what it is, you take it or leave it, you know, or let's do something with it, you know, and, and then we'll see what happens with that. So I think it's just being who you are, you know, and being the true you, because a lot of us, and getting that rid of um, embellishment, put, getting, getting rid of that facade kind of, um, a little facade personality out of all of us, and just being happy. Now, episode number five, we had the pleasure of speaking with JJ Flizanes and Doug Sandler um, on being fake married. Have you ever heard the term fake married? I hadn't before that, but here they are talking about fake married. And so now we're fake married. What does that mean? Doug? (laughs) Well, okay. So I guess I'm responsible for being fake married because if it was probably up to JJ, we would probably be real married. And my joke is I've I've been married and divorced twice before I met JJ and I, um, or the second one was in the process when I, when I started getting involved with JJ and I'm like the only common denominator or the common denominator in all of my failed marriages is me. And why do I want to start this again if it's going to end up like that? So I'm like, ah, maybe we shouldn't do this. So that was just my thought. The reality of it is I'm sure at one point we will get married. I'm just not in a hurry to get married, but we own property together. And in California, that's better than married. (laughs) And to be fair, I also was like, I don't need to get married again when we first got together. And then I did shift because after the pain of the divorce and the thinking of all that and uh, kind of faded away, I thought, well, I've only been married once and I don't really like the fact that there's only one person on this planet who I have called husband and it isn't you. Um, So I have definitely changed my mind on that. But like Doug, I'm not necessarily in any kind of rush, but we know we'll be together forever. So it's not really about trying to create some kind of security. It's just because even when you have security, you think you have security. It's still a choice every day. You wake up every day and you choose to be either conscious and present in your relationship or you check out and you're married for years and years, but you have no relationship. You have no sex life. You have no compassion. You have no intimacy. You have no connection. And, uh, and at least, you know, for us, we choose each other every day and we will continue. I'm sure after we get married, but Um, but it's a more conscious choice this time around. Well, I think one of our first fights that became a thing, uh, (laughs) besides when I first, when, when Doug first moved in, he, from his past marriage had a little bit of an abandonment issue, which actually tracks back to his dad. Remember Um, this. So, and I, and I was personal training at the time before I had retired from personal training and I have early morning clients. And so I'm of the, like, I love my sleep. Like, don't bother me while I'm sleeping. And, and so I would be very quiet and I would leave the house because it was very early in the morning and let him sleep. And he'd get up and feel abandoned because I had left. And he'd be like, why didn't you come in and say goodbye? And I said, because you were sleeping. I don't want to wake you up. Because if you wake me up, the the chances of me getting back to sleep are are harder sometimes. So I was being considerate, but he was feeling wounded. So that was probably our first fight. But the fight that became a thing, that kind of went away. The, the food one. Are, the food one. Is yep, that the, one? the food one. Uh, so I, we, I work with couples and relationships also, and and coaching and stuff, and we use a lot of different tools. And uh, I've done a Mago work for a long time, and in the couples dialogue. So we've used the couples dialogue many times. It's one of our favorite tools to really uncover what's going on for each person in sort of a fight that happens all the time. And I knew from the beginning what was happening with him, with this, with me, but it was this food fight that we would have because we ordered Green Chef and I was eating keto and they'd give you vegetables that were like kale and cabbage and things that Doug wasn't used to eating. Um, His whole eating has changed since meeting me, but he wasn't eating it. And I would, and I would get like, it would, it would trigger something in me. It would trigger a fear in me and then a frustration in me. And for him, it would trigger him feeling a lack of freedom. So it happened like three times, like they were little, they weren't like yelly fights or anything. They were just little like jabs of like, well, you know, and then, and then not feeling good about it. So by the third time it happened, I was like, all right, we need to have a couple's dialogue about this. So he went in his office and he grabbed his feelings and needs list. And he did his due diligence to see what his needs were and which I didn't expect him to do, which was awesome. And then we met in the bedroom and we talked about it. And I let him go first because I wanted him to express his feelings, which were 
Do you want to tell your feelings? I, I, I swear. I, I mean, I know we did a couple dialogue, but I do not remember the words that we said. You know, I, I always say to JJ, I don't remember the words that we said to each other, but I remember how they made me feel. I'm a very emotional, feely guy. And maybe I'm different than most guys. Maybe I'm the same as most guys, but I feel like I remember the feeling. I just don't remember the action. And the so details. Ahead, well, the details. You right. were feeling, because of your past traumas of sort of being a slower eater and having people say, hurry up, Doug, or let's take your food with you, or you, you felt a certain lack of autonomy and freedom around food. And yes. that was showing up in when I would get triggered and say something, he would want to kind of be like, don't tell me what to eat. Like, I'm gonna eat whatever I want. I'm an adult. I can eat whatever I want. And, uh, and so, and I got that. So I, he expressed his need for autonomy and freedom of choice and being a man and making his own decisions, which I was totally supportive of. Then we got to me. And my first question was, so do you ever like get nervous about thinking about to having to take care of me in the future physically? And he's like, no, you're going to take care of yourself or you're going to tell me what to do. And I was like, okay. I said, well, I know that my whole life is going to change when you need care. I'm going to basically have to be your nurse. And uh, so what you eat now also affects what happens in the future. And so I'm looking at you taking care of yourself now as a contribution to my life in the future. And then I cried because it was all about, I finally found you and I don't want you to go. I want you to be alive forever. <laughs> and please just take really good care of yourself because I love you so much and I want you to be around forever. So, so that was our first fight. And that was how we dealt with it. We did a couple dialogue. We figured out what it was about. Everybody felt heard and seen. And, and it's been, it's never been an issue since. I think I said this to you the other day. I said, I, I'm fine being your Stedman if you want to be Oprah. That's totally fine with me. I, this, is, this is good. I don't need, I don't want to keep up and I don't need to keep up. I love watching her soar. It's, uh, it is amazing over the last four years to watch just the growth in the last four years, not only professionally, but personally as well. So, um, you know, I, I very much respect and appreciate and encourage what JJ is doing with every part of her life. Now, I wanted to ask you the question in the next episode, how do you fight to really get you thinking about what conflict actually looks like in your relationships? Some people, when there's an issue, they like dig in deep and they're there to get it resolved. Then, you know, right then, right there, they, they're not going anywhere until they've pulled apart the issue. For others, it's shutting down. It's walking away. It's flying off the handle, losing your temper. It's agreeing and giving in. It's doing the silent treatment. But I also don't think it is unrealistic to expect a relationship where there are no huge disagreements, where there are boundaries, where there is the safety and the comfort of being able to express how you really feel of being vulnerable, of being raw, of being able to be your true self. To know that just because you do have a fight or you do have a disagreement or there is something that you both have a difference of opinion on, that it doesn't mean that the relationship's over. And relationships of every type is what we cover here in Relationship Talks. And so we had the pleasure or I had the pleasure of speaking to Chris Lake on parent-child relationships. And I think he had some real gold nuggets of information in there in terms of how we can actually learn to parent better. Child learns the behavior is useful. They will continue that behavior. They're not concerned with good or bad. It's not a matter of manipulation or morality or it's simply useful. And when the child, as you said, the child is still developing. The brain is developing about 80% to the age of three. And then the, the brain fully develops in our mid-20s, not in our teens, as we once may have thought. But for women, it usually finishes about 24. And for guys, because we're kind of dumb, we need an extra two years and the brain finishes baking at 26. Um, but that, that zero to three phase, you have a lot of time where you can put information, behavior, character traits, knowledge into a child's head recognize what your child recognizes as useful really pay attention to that because they key in if they recognize that by screaming every night you are going to pick them up from the crib put them in the bed and let them sleep in the bed even though you really want them to sleep in their own crib they have learned that is useful if 
you're at the store and they really want the M&Ms or the candy or whatever little treat is perfectly at eye level for them and you just want to leave and you're so tired and you got to get dinner ready and all this things happening and they have a full-blown next level Mach 5 ear-blown pitch meltdown um, and you say fine fine we'll get it let's just go that was useful the child has learned that was useful now in episode eight i was lucky enough to speak to michelle hoffman on the art of relationshiping um relationship ready is really defined specifically by who you are i have a process that i've put in place and when you dive into the dating pool one you need to know that you're relationship ready and what's key is you need to be able to see other people who are relationship ready so that they aren't someone who might drag you down with them. So essentially when I'm working with someone, I have something called a confidence index. And we go through like the major aspects of life that you need to have in place just to wake up in the morning and feel confident that you got this going on. And that could be understanding who you are in the world and who you were. What's one of the exercises that I do is who did you used to be, who are you now, and who would you like to step into becoming? It sounds so simple, right? Mm -hmm. When you really dig down into that, it's a life-changing <laughs> activity. I just got off a call with a client, and she has been um, looking for a partner with potential. And it's appropriate at the lifeline of her relationship arc I would say it's appropriate to look for a partner with potential when you're at the younger or earlier stages of relationshiping with somebody who you want to partner with, you want to build a home, a family with, that they're going to grow through life. So my grandmother gave me some sage advice many, 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 many years ago. And she said, whatever little idiosyncrasies that, you know, your person has, make sure you can live with them because they're only going to be exaggerated. So what is one thing, you know, that you really wish and hope people understand when it comes to relationships? That all relationships, that well, life is better with good love in it. Relationships can be easy. And they all follow the same cycle from chemistry to casual to committed. And next up, I asked you the question, how well do you listen? And I think listening, um, as you'll hear, is something that I think we all are better, think we're better at than what we actually are. So understanding the difference between surface level and deep level listening. We all love to think we are great listeners, that we've got that skill down pat that we hear what other people are telling us. Uh, surface level listening is where we sit here, we listen to what the other person's saying, and then we respond. We respond to the words that they've said. We respond to the message that we have heard. And from a problem solving perspective, it's when somebody tells us they've got an issue and then we say, this is how you fix it. Can lead people to feeling unhurt it can lead to feelings of resentment, of anger or frustration because you're talking and the other person's just not hearing your message. But that's what that deep level listening does, right? It under, it's looking for all of those hidden emotion and cues that are underneath. Sometimes when people talk to us and they're telling us the problems, they're telling us the issues, they're telling us the obstacles that they're facing and the challenges that they're having. They don't actually want a solution. Sometimes they know what they have to do. And then episode number 10 was completed by a great interview with Andrew and Caitlin Holmes on their marriage and there, I suppose, how their relationship has grown through the creation and the pursuit of love over it. Actually, so we we emceed a wedding this summer. Um, I've emceed a wedding before, but we emceed it together uh, for two of our really good friends from high school. And I gave them some advice, like 
as you would. And the advice I said to them was to always remain curious about you know their partner because about each other because I that's what I found is once I turned like there was a time and during our marriage I'm not sure when it was but I was like you know what we are different and we are, I'm constantly learning more about her and the more I learn about her the more in love I get with her so it's just this this curiosity of like constantly learning more about you and and how we work and those types of things that like that's really what basis of it is for me really yeah we definitely um as soon as you think you have it figured out you don't mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's you, there's something new to learn and thankfully we both enjoy learning yes. um and we were very dedicated to understanding each other um and yeah i'd say that's that's how our relationship works do you think that honesty has created a vulnerability and a rawness in your relationship that's actually helped it to grow stronger yes 100 percent, without a doubt and that is it for the wrap up of our first 10 episodes. I really hope you have enjoyed it as much as I have really enjoyed being here. And I suppose having the opportunity to speak to people and get underneath and go behind those closed doors in their relationships. And thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of Relationship Talks. If you can, I would love for you to jump on and leave a review. And whilst you are at it, don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please join me again next week when we get to take a look behind closed doors at someone else's relationship. But until then, I am your host, Laurie Brooke, and remember the choice is yours, so make today and the week the very best it can be.